This is a post-apocalyptic world overrun by a zombie virus. A man enters a room, preparing to gather supplies when suddenly the refrigerator behind him catches his attention. Zombies tend to favor dark places. He cautiously approaches and listens closely, confirming the presence of a zombie inside. Carefully, he shuts the refrigerator door and securely locks it with an iron nail. The zombie starts struggling inside, while the man calmly chains the refrigerator and hooks the other end to his car. With a sudden burst of acceleration, he drags the refrigerator. He knows that the zombie's fatal weakness is exposure to sunlight, which quickly turns them into charred remains. Rourke's hatred for zombies runs deep as his wife is killed by one. He spends his time either hunting zombies or traveling toward zombie-infested areas. After every zombie kill, Rourke carves a tally mark on the buttstock of his gun. Over time, the marks have accumulated, almost filling the entire surface of the buttstock. However, in this post-apocalyptic world, the most horrifying threat isn't just the zombies but also the surviving humans, who mercilessly turn on each other for the limited food supply. One day, after Rourke finishes off a zombie, he suddenly spots a woman sitting on the street. Based on his years of experience, he immediately recognizes it as a trap set by other people. Despite some suspicions from survivors passing by, they decide to get off the car and help. As one man approaches to check on the woman, he is suddenly shot down. It's evident they have fallen into someone else's ambush. Conflict erupts between the two groups, and due to their outnumbered position, the survivors are quickly reduced to just the woman. The group of thugs initially had the intention to loot supplies, but upon seeing the woman, an evil idea takes root in their minds. Just as they were preparing to proceed with their next step, a gunshot shattered their intentions. Rourke appeared and quickly dispatched several thugs with his gun before taking cover behind a car. The angry bald man, armed with a shotgun, advanced on him, but was quickly taken out by Rourke's precise aim. Despite being outnumbered, Rourke's combat experience gave him the upper hand. He deftly used the car as a shield and his impressive marksmanship to eliminate all the remaining thugs, even landing a few extra shots as he passed by. Sam, who had been rescued, realized that she had been a pawn used by the thugs. She decided to leave with Rourke, as their car had been destroyed during the firefight and they wouldn't survive the night with the impending zombie horde. Sam offered a rich reward in exchange for Rourke's help, and after some consideration, he agreed to take them back to her camp. They set off immediately, but despite their best efforts, they didn't make it to their destination before nightfall. The zombie horde was closing in on them, and Sam used her radio to call for help from the camp. Ethan, who received the message, immediately sprang into action. The elderly and infirm were secured in safer rooms, and the rest of the camp went out with weapons to meet them. As the camp's doors slowly opened, everyone was on high alert. Rourke and his companions arrived just in time, with the zombie horde closing in on them. Rourke immediately began firing, but the zombies kept coming in the darkness. Fortunately, the group that had come to meet them arrived just in time, and their combined firepower quickly took down the zombies, allowing them to retreat to the camp. However, just as the gate was about to close, Rourke caught sight of a tall zombie that seemed familiar. Although the rescue mission had gone smoothly, when they learned that all of Sam's teammates who went out with her had perished, suspicion fell upon this unfamiliar man. The camp never accepted outsiders especially peculiar individuals who roamed alone and enjoyed hunting zombies. They could potentially bring disaster to the camp at any time. Both sides engaged in a heated argument about whether or not to shelter him, as the dispute was about to escalate into physical conflict. Sam's words brought an end to the quarrel. Upon hearing this, everyone was stunned, as they had long desired to leave this dangerous place. Seeing the plain photos taken by Sam, Frank, the leader of the camp, immediately expressed that if nothing unexpected happened tonight, they would leave the city by plane early the next morning. However, Frank clearly didn't trust Rourke. Despite Sam's repeated claims that Rourke had saved her, Frank confiscated his weapons and planned to keep him in solitary confinement. Rourke, though extremely reluctant, had no choice but to comply with the current situation. Before entering the prison cell, Rourke asked about the tall zombie he had seen earlier. Ethan told him that the zombie was indeed different, it seemed to have developed its own consciousness. With its appearance, the ordinary zombies were no longer a disorganized mob. They would launch organized attacks on humans at night. While during the day, the zombie king would lead them to hide in a nearby hotel. Upon learning the precise location of the hotel, Rourke obediently entered the prison cell. However, as expected, an unexpected incident occurred immediately. Ethan in the surveillance room suddenly noticed that the camera at the entrance inexplicably malfunctioned. On the other side, the guard on duty at the entrance heard abnormal noises. 
He approached to investigate but was caught off guard when a zombie suddenly appeared behind him. As the guard fell, more zombies infiltrated the camp. The guard responsible for watching over Rourke was the first to suffer a zombie attack. He fired a shot but unfortunately missed. The sound of the gunshot immediately alerted everyone in the camp, but the guard fell in front of Rourke. Once the zombies left, Rourke quickly escaped from the cell using a lockpicking tool he had prepared in advance. Meanwhile, the other man was organizing the evacuation but was suddenly pounced on by a zombie. Fortunately, his teammates arrived just in time to save him. One zombie began attacking the defenseless elderly and weak, forcing them into a prison cell. The man who was the last to enter was torn apart on the spot. The two men tried to close the iron door, but the zombies held onto it firmly. Despite their efforts, they were unable to stop the zombies from breaking through. At a critical moment, Rourke appeared. As the zombies fell, other armed personnel rushed to the scene. However, none of them knew that the man who had just been attacked had already been bitten. His teammate behind him noticed the man's wound. The man knew his fate, but his only concern was his daughter. After entrusting his daughter to Sam, Frank decisively sent him away. Soon, the day broke. According to the plan, they prepared to go to the location of the aircraft. But when Ethan tried to open the door, he found that it wouldn't budge, as if something was jamming it. To figure out the situation, they had no choice but to go around through the front entrance. However, what they saw in front of them left everyone stunned. Countless scrapped cars had completely blocked the basement door. No wonder they couldn't open it. Clearly, it was the work of the Zombie King, who intended to trap them in the camp and continue the attacks at night. Faced with intelligent zombies, everyone was at a loss, unable to figure out what to do. As they couldn't leave due to the cars blocking the basement, someone suggested moving all the wrecked cars outside, but there was no way they could complete such a laborious task before nightfall. Others proposed searching for other usable cars outside, but that idea was quickly dismissed because the virus outbreak had occurred two and a half years ago, rendering those cars useless. Just when everyone didn't know what to do, Rourke came up with a bold idea. Translation. Instead of passively defending, it's better to take the initiative and go to the hotel to kill the zombie king. Ordinary zombies are nothing to fear without their leader. Although this method is risky, they have no choice but to fight back against it. After careful consideration, Frank also agreed. Just in case, they split up. Frank took a group of people to search for usable cars, while Rourke led the remaining people to blow up the zombie's stronghold. Soon, the five-person team arrived at their destination. They entered the hotel and found it unusually dim. It was indeed a good hiding place. After a thorough search, the team finally discovered sleeping zombies in the basement. However, executing the plan became a new problem because there were two exits. Someone needed to go to the other exit to place the bomb. This task was obviously dangerous. No one spoke. But Drew, who was usually timid, stepped forward. He took the bomb and carefully passed through the crowd of zombies. However, just as he was about to place the bomb, the zombie king suddenly attacked him from behind, followed by a roar that awakened all the sleeping zombies. Seeing the mission failed, the remaining people unleashed their firepower and quickly retreated from the basement. Ethan covered the others and pressed the detonator of the pre-placed bomb. When the three of them hid in the kitchen, they discovered that Chris had become separated in panic. The next second, zombies broke through the door, and one of their teammates sacrificed himself to cover the escape of the other two ultimately using a grenade to perish along with the zombies. Rourke and Ethan had just escaped from inside when they collided head-on with another group of zombies, forcing them to run upstairs, facing relentless pursuit from the zombies. The two of them fought and retreated, finally managing to reach the outside before the horde caught up. With the sunlight as their cover, the zombies ceased their chase. Ethan immediately used the radio to call Chris, but his situation was not optimistic. It seemed like he had been bitten by a zombie. However, if they wanted to escape from there, they had to go to Chris to retrieve the rope, so the two of them had to split up. Rourke took on the task of attracting the attention of the zombies, while Ethan went to their teammate's location to get the rope from the other side. After a provocation, Rourke successfully lured the zombies towards him, while Ethan found the unconscious Chris at that moment. However, just as he was grabbing the rope, Chris, who had been bitten, suddenly mutated. Attracting the attention of the zombie king, Rourke, Seeing the situation, had no choice but to go support Ethan. Just as Ethan finished dealing with his situation, Chris, now a zombie, lunged at him. The two of them instantly engaged in a struggle, with Ethan being in grave danger. Fortunately, Rourke arrived in time to save him. Finally, the two of them made it outside without further incident. But Ethan was unfortunate to have been wounded by a zombie. 
Rourke remains silent, standing quietly on the side, waiting for him to mutate. Eventually, before the sky grew dark, Rourke bid Ethan a final farewell. Afterward, Rourke successfully descended to the ground using a rope. As the sun had already set, the zombies began pouring out. The other team could only find a small car because they couldn't take everyone with them. Dugan wanted to leave the others behind and escape with the pilot alone, but his request was rejected. Others criticized Dugan for his selfish behavior, and both sides started arguing. Suddenly, they saw their comrades returning in a bus, and now everyone could leave. However, their joy was short-lived as Rourke brought a large horde of zombies. The fighting personnel immediately opened fire, but there were simply too many zombies. And with nightfall, they were definitely trapped for the night. So they had to retreat to the camp and reconsider their plan. However, the zombie horde, led by the zombie king, pursued them closely. The remaining people could only run upstairs and quickly shut the door, preventing further zombie attacks. Although they were temporarily safe, whether they could survive the night was still uncertain, and everyone fell into great panic. Frank blamed Rourke for Ethan's death, but the plan had failed, and no one wanted to see that. Since things had come to this point, continuing to argue was meaningless. They had to unite now. As long as they could hold on through the night, everyone could survive. The remaining fighting personnel immediately formulated a battle plan. They intended to defend the gate and fight the zombies until dawn. Before that, Rourke revealed his secret to Sam. The reason he came to this city was to seek revenge against the zombie king because his wife had been killed by the zombie king. Upon hearing this, Sam planned to fight the zombies alongside Rourke, but his offer was rejected because Sam's mission was to ensure the safety of the elderly and vulnerable. After speaking, Rourke went alone to the door, and the zombies broke in at that moment. Rourke immediately fought back with his gun, but as soon as he finished off one wave of zombies, another wave swarmed in. He threw a grenade and quickly ran upstairs. The following zombies were dealt with by the remaining people one by one, but more zombies rushed in. They could only use the geographical advantage to lure and manipulate the zombies. The prolonged battle pushed everyone into a desperate situation. Even in their final moments, they never retreated, only to buy more time for others. The intense fight lasted the entire night. Although most of the combatants had sacrificed themselves, only a few zombies remained. After firing the last few bullets, Frank was overwhelmed by the small zombies led by the Zombie King. By the time Rourke arrived, Frank was already dead. The Zombie King appeared immediately and ordered the zombies to pursue Rourke. Upon seeing this, Rourke quickly shot and eliminated one, then killed another while escaping. The last zombie attempted to pounce, but Rourke agilely evaded it and used the prison cell to kill it. Before catching his breath, the Zombie King appeared behind Rourke and threw him away. A distance of 6.66 meters. As a result, Rourke's weapon fell from his hand. Realizing that he couldn't confront the zombie king head-on, Rourke had to choose tactical retreat. However, during his escape, the pursuing zombie king knocked him down. Rourke stabbed the zombie king with a knife, but it was ineffective and instead, the zombie king punched his hand, causing him to drop the sharp blade. After managing to push the zombie king away, Rourke was knocked down by another punch. Faced with absolute power, Rourke was completely trapped. Seeing that he still intended to defeat the Zombie King, relying solely on brute force was obviously futile. He looked toward the door to the rooftop, already formulating a plan in his mind. Rourke quickly ran up the stairs, intending to lure the Zombie King up. The Zombie King, without much thought, followed closely behind. Although he was indeed intelligent, he didn't realize that it was already broad daylight. At the final moment, just as he was about to be caught up, Rourke decisively opened the door to the rooftop. The Zombie King, exposed to the sunlight, instantly lost its combat power. In no time, it was roasted into charred remains. Rourke successfully accomplished his revenge. However, he didn't choose to leave with the team on the plane. Instead, he embarked on a solitary path, continuing to hunt down zombies. 